as you see with the images. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Miritam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Galadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we were discussing about the soul, you, the real person within the body, becoming free from the repetition, the repetition of, of birth, birth and, death. and death. The repetition, the repetition of, birth, of and death birth and death is called, is called samsara. samsara. This word is called samsara. Samsara means uh, we take birth, we live for some number of years in a particular body and then we have to leave that body. That is called death. Again after death, Again, we take birth in another body. If we don't prepare to actually get out of this cycle of birth and death, then we have to keep taking birth again and again and again. So, the Bhagavad Gita is instructing us, uh, Amritatvaya Kalpate, you can attain immortality. So, uh, we should not become engrossed with temporary things in this world. Just like people are so much engrossed in so many different activities, but they are not thinking, how will these activities help me to actually prepare myself for the final change of body at the time of death? Because the activities I do now will determine what kind of body I am going to get next. This is very, very important to understand. My next body depends on the kind of activities I do now. If I am engrossed in ordinary, I am going to get another similar body, whatever it may be. But if I become uh, active spiritually, then I am going to get a spiritual body. If I become active spiritually, I will get a spiritual body. So, it is a matter of choosing between different activities and being intelligent enough to choose those activities which will result in my getting a spiritual body. Then no more birth, no more death, no more disease, no more old age, no more miseries, uh, eternal life. So, uh, this requires preparation, not just uh, merely doing some activities mechanically, but mainly we should understand it is a question of changing our consciousness. Our consciousness normally is engrossed with so many different ideas about material enjoyment. Because of ignorance, generally we think, how can I be happy? By eating nicely, by making nice arrangements for supplying comforts to this body, by speculating about some grand plan for the future, I will do this, I will buy this, I will, uh, so many different plans like that. But that's not going to help. Uh, that consciousness 
of enjoying in this world is the root cause for our material existence, for our taking birth in this world. If we understand all this endeavor for the enjoyment is simply something which is going to give me some temporary uh, happiness or sometimes we don't get happiness, we get distress, though we don't want distress. So, instead of bothering about this happiness and distress pertaining to the body, pertaining to the external covering of the real soul, instead of that, if we try to understand what are the activities of the soul, not just the activities of the body, activities of the soul. So the activities of the soul are in relationship with Krishna. Always the activities of the soul are in relationship with Krishna. So we should understand I am spirit soul, but I am very, very, very tiny. I am a very insignificant part of the Supreme Lord Krishna. Every living being is a part of Krishna and we are part of Krishna eternally. So we are as spirit soul conscious and we are also having consciousness. I am conscious or any person is conscious means is aware, like you are aware of the pleasures and pains of your body. I am aware of the pleasures and pains of my body. So our consciousness is limited. We are limitedly conscious. My consciousness is spread over my body. Even though as spirit soul, very, 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 very tiny, as I described earlier, what is the dimension of the spirit soul? One ten thousand part of the tip of the hair point in size. Very, 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 very tiny. That spirit soul spreads its influence throughout this entire body from the head to the toe. Just like if I pinch any part of your body, you will feel the pain. An ant is biting some corner of your toe. You immediately perceive that and biting. It is because you, the spirit soul, you are having consciousness. That consciousness is spread all over the body. So there are many theories that say that this consciousness is due to some material combination. No, consciousness is never due to any material combination. Consciousness is always due to the spirit soul. It is the actual energy of the soul. So, since we cannot see the soul, we cannot perceive the presence of the soul by any instrument, we can understand the presence of the soul by its energy called consciousness. Anybody can understand what is the difference between a dead body and a living body. Living body, there is consciousness. Dead body, there is no consciousness. So, uh, this consciousness is the symptom of the soul. Even though sometimes the consciousness is subdued. Just like at night when we go to sleep, uh, in the wakeful state, in our present wakeful state, we are in one state of consciousness called Jagrata Avastha. It is called a wakeful state. Then when I go to sleep at night, then I go into what is called a Swapna Avastha, dream state. In the Swapna Avastha, dream state, I am active, but I am active in the subtle body, in the mind inside, within this body I am active. The body itself is lying on the bed and body is just lying down and I am not able to see or 
smell nothing so i am lying there on the bed this body i means this body whereas the mind is active in the dream state but there is another state after the dream state there is a third state of consciousness that is called sushupti means i become unconscious for a small amount of time a short amount of time i become unconscious that means neither i am awake nor am i dreaming i am simply uh, uh, simply unconscious my consciousness is withdrawn from the mind as well as from this body external body and then after some time being unconscious again i come back to dream state then i come to again wakeful state morning when i wake up i come back to the wakeful state so the states of consciousness keep changing even when uh, a person is given anesthesia during a surgical operation uh, the doctor gives what is called as anesthesia then again the external consciousness is withdrawn and the person undergoing the surgery after an anesthesia does not feel or experience the pain due to the do doctor doing the surgery they cut open some part of the body to do some some surgery but the person undergoing the surgery is temporarily unconscious temporarily unconscious so this uh, state of consciousness uh, this is uh, to be understood that this is due to the soul it is not due to the body it's not due to the body the body is simply a covering a dress now one more place in the bhagavad gita it is said just like this uh, we have a dress we have a a cloth over our body now the dress itself has got a particular form because my body has a form i have a form just like if i have to stitch a shirt i go to a tailor and then the tailor takes measurements so what does he measure he measures the size and the and the uh, dimensions of the body which is going to be clothed the cloth which is going to cover the body so if i have two hands my shirt will have two sleeves if i have a neck the shirt will have a collar if i have got a trunk then the shirt will be of that size so the cloth is having a shape or a form because i have a shape and a form similarly krishna explains in the bhagavad gita this body itself is actually a dress for the soul for the real you inside that means what is the shape or the form of the body that is according to the shape and form of the soul so therefore people who think the soul is formless has no shape or no form they are actually mistaken the soul has got a form a a particular type of shape and based on that the body is actually uh, getting the shape or getting the form so uh, the soul is not formless the soul has got a form but the form of the soul originally is a spiritual form not this material form it's a spiritual form now why this material form because each one of us in this world we want to enjoy materially we want to do something in this material world we want to lord over material nature each one of us we try to take control 
just like this body itself actually is made up of material elements and those material elements belong to material nature but each one of us thinks oh this body is mine i control my body but the fact is we don't control our bodies entirely a little amount of uh, control seems to be there for each one of us over our own bodies but actually we know there are different situations where this control is lost just like when i am sleeping and i am in the unconscious state i don't have control over my limbs i don't have control over my senses i don't have any control i don't even know what is happening i'm not aware i'm completely uh, they say deep sleep sometimes this unconscious state is called deep sleep that means a person is totally unaware what is happening uh, so that uh, control is not there neither when there is anesthesia given and the consciousness is withdrawn i don't have control over my uh, body so the body actually belongs to material nature and we don't have actual control over this body because we don't control material nature so we should understand from the bhagavad gita this material nature ultimately is controlled by god krishna and similarly we are also controlled each one of us every spirit soul is controlled by god by krishna krishna is the supreme controller and krishna controls not necessarily directly but through his agencies he has got many many different agencies through which he completely controls everyone and everything so krishna has got his form he has got his uh, consciousness his consciousness is unlimited his consciousness is spread everywhere throughout the entire creation everywhere his consciousness spread therefore he can perceive whatever is happening in which of a place so whereas our consciousness is limited always limited uh, sometimes people think that oh when i get liberation then my consciousness can become unlimited no it is not possible we are part a tiny part of krishna we are eternally so we are always a tiny part and our consciousness is limited will be limited was limited always is limited whereas krishna is unlimited and krishna's consciousness is unlimited it is spread everywhere so krishna has entered into this universe and that's how this universe is working very nicely just like i have entered into this body and as long as i am present in this body the body will be working there will be consciousness in the body if i leave the body which happens at a time of death then there will be no more consciousness neither the body will work the body will not work anymore so just like my entering into this body this body uh, begins to exhibit symptoms of um, life and then the body starts working and the body keeps on working and even the doctors who try to um, um, try to give some a treatment for this body if something is not working properly that is possible as long as the soul the spirit soul is in the body after the spirit soul leaves the body the doctor cannot do anything on such a body in which there is no spirit soul the doctor cannot do anything so uh, this body works only as long as the spirit soul is inside the body similarly the universe is functioning working very nicely all the planets are rotating in their orbits just like the sun the most important planet 
the sun planet. The sun planet is supplying heat and light to sustain life on all the other planets in the entire universe. This information we get from the Vedic literature. There is one sun in every universe. There are millions of universes, but in every universe there is only one sun. So there are millions of other planets. So there is life on all the other planets and it is sustained by the energy we are receiving, heat and light we are receiving from the sun. So that uh, sun is moving in its orbit only by the arrangement of the Supreme Lord Krishna. And Krishna has entered into this universe at the beginning of creation and he maintains the entire universe. All the planets are perfectly maintained by Krishna. And things are going on very nicely. Uh, we are getting our supply of water, air, we are getting uh, uh, all the necessities from the earth itself, grains and, and fruits and vegetables, whatever, metals, minerals, all this we are getting because Krishna has made arrangement at the time of creation. Whatever necessary for sustaining life, Krishna has arranged. So without Krishna entering into this universe, this universe will not function, will not work. There will be no changes happening. Similarly, uh, Krishna's consciousness is spread everywhere. Krishna's consciousness is spread everywhere. Krishna is unlimitedly uh, uh, conscious, aware. So we always are limitedly conscious. Krishna is unlimitedly conscious. Krishna is having unlimited strength, unlimited power, unlimited knowledge, unlimited beauty, unlimited everything, uh, unlimited wealth, Krishna is unlimited wealth. So everyone else other than Krishna, all the living beings, they always have everything in limitation. Even the Devatas, the Devatas also are having some power more than any of us, but their power is also limited compared to Krishna's power, which is unlimited. And everyone, whatever they may have, whatever power, whatever strength, whatever beauty, whatever wealth they may have, they are given that by Krishna. By an arrangement, Krishna has given different living beings with different quantities of power, quantities of beauty, quantities of strength, quantities of intelligence, knowledge, everything Krishna has given and it is always limited. So, neither we are God nor we can become God. This is very important to understand. Some people think, oh, I can become God. Just like they think somebody can do meditation and become God. No, it's not possible. Whether you do meditation or you do any gymnastic Whatever you may do, you cannot become God. So, this is very important to understand because uh, only then we can set a proper goal for our life. Goal of life is not simply that everything will be over at the end of this life. So, let me, as long as I am living in this body, let me enjoy life. No, that is not a proper goal because when death comes then we will be completely uh, bewildered. So we should prepare for this change of body at the time of death and the preparation should be not that I can become God by some method, no, but I can become God conscious, I can become Godly, I can uh, become a devotee of God. In that way, I qualify myself to go to God, God's kingdom, personal kingdom in the spiritual world, to live with God, eternal life, full of bliss and knowledge. So that is the proper goal for everyone, that become God conscious, become Krishna conscious. And there is no question of 
uh, believing. Sometimes people ask, do you believe in God? So Srila Prabhupada explains there is no question of belief. It's a fact. It's a truth. It is the ultimate reality. God is the supreme person eternally, always. It's not a question of Hindu God, Christian God, uh, a God for the believers. No, nothing like that. Just like the sun, the sun supplies energy, heat and light for everyone on every planet within this universe. So there's no question of believing. It is a fact and we are dependent on the energy that is coming from the sun. Similarly, we are being maintained by Krishna. Uh, whether somebody believes or does not believe, whether somebody is aware or not aware, uh, Krishna is the one who is supplying us all our necessities and uh, therefore we have to recognize this, we have to understand this, we have to realize this fact. And by doing so, we are able to properly uh, offer our gratitude to Krishna for whatever he is supplying and thereby awaken our real relationship with Krishna. That is the whole process of Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga is, first of all, understanding the truth about who we are, who is God, what is the relationship, and then based on this knowledge, we try to perform activities with this understanding so that I prepare myself or anyone can prepare himself or herself for the future. That is, when death is going to come, it's not that simply I will change this body and enter another body. No, I will, of course, quit this body at the time of death, but I will enter Krishna's abode, Krishna's personal kingdom in a spiritual form. So we change our body to attain a spiritual body or a spiritual form. We don't say generally spiritual body because it doesn't have any of the qualities of this body. It is completely different. It's entirely different. So to help us understand the, uh, the nature of the spiritual form, whether the form of Krishna or our own original form, spiritual form. The qualities of the soul are described by Krishna in the later portion of the Bhagavad Gita. So we discussed briefly about this. The first quality of the soul is there is no birth and there is no death for the soul. Na jayate mriyate va kadachit. Kadachit means uh, any time, whether in the past, whether in the present or in the future, the soul never takes birth, never dies. So what we know as birth and death pertains only to this material body, to the external covering of the soul. It does not apply to the soul. Though when I take birth, I as spirit soul am forced to enter this body and remain in this body till death. I am forced to remain in this body. But that um, entering the body and remaining the body till death is actually still, I don't mix with this body. I remain completely apart from this body. I remain apart from this body. Just like we uh, read the description that Krishna says, the body is changing, but I am the same person. So through the changes of the body, the spirit soul, the real person inside the body remains unchanged. Remains unchanged. The body is changing, but every person within the body is not changing. What about the mind? The mind is also another kind of body only. It is a subtle body. Mind is also changing, but the person in the inside within this body and mind system is not changing. The person is the same. 
only what changes is the awareness the consciousness the consciousness changes right? the consciousness changes according to association if i associate uh, with uh, um, with a particular type of um, object for enjoying just like a child likes to play with toys then the consciousness of the child will be uh, a particular type of um, enjoying consciousness it will enjoy like a child with that type of consciousness then the parents who understand that if the child is simply playing 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 all the time and not doing any any learning any studies then it is wasting its time its future is very very uh, going to be very uh, bleak very bad future so therefore the parents even if the child doesn't like to uh, stop playing the parents will somehow make the child stop playing at least for some time and go to the school or get educated or learn some uh, uh, real um, meaningful uh, subjects so that is because the parents are thinking of the future of the child similarly we may be engrossed in so many different activities which are aimed at our uh, pleasure for our present uh, situation in this body but thinking of the future is wise huh? what is going to happen at, at the time of death what happens after death that is very very important so the spiritually enlightened and wise uh, sages uh, spiritualists uh, devotees advanced devotees pure devotees they uh, are preaching they are teaching they are uh, giving us this valuable knowledge and they are telling us about the future beyond just this body beyond this body so uh, they are teaching us about this most important uh, understanding that we are not this body we are not the mind we are spirit soul so for the spirit soul there is no birth there is no death we'll discuss more qualities of the spirit soul in the next session now i will answer some questions as devotees of krishna how should we offer condolences to the family of the bereaved yes when somebody uh, dies then definitely the the immediate relatives and the friends are affected so um, what is the way of uh, pacifying them or offering them condolences so the example is given in the bhagavatam when the battle of kurukshetra took place after the battle was over there were so many millions of uh, persons who died in that battle right it says uh, 64 crore uh, people died in the battle so because of that those who survived they were afflicted by so much of grief it is described in the bhagavatam that uh, after the battle there was maharaj yudhishthira along with his younger brothers dhritarashtra gandhari kunti draupadi all overwhelmed with grief because all of them lost their near and dear ones and lord krishna was also there with them then it is described to actually uh, help them overcome this acute distress this grief uh, they began to uh, speak and uh, pacify the afflicted people that citing the stringent laws of the almighty and their reactions upon living beings lord sri krishna and the sages began to pacify those who were shocked and affected so it's very important uh, that we explain to the people who are bereaved 
that uh, the actual person has not died. The actual person is spirit soul and the person has uh, given up the body that we know. We only know the person in terms of the body, external body. We don't know anything about the soul. Even if we know about the soul, we cannot see the soul. So we only know in terms of the external body. So that body is finished. At the time of death, it is finished. It's over. But the person has taken another birth, has accepted another body. So there is no reason to lament about uh, the body being destroyed. But certainly there is a feeling of separation, especially if a beloved uh, relative passes away. There is a feeling of separation. That is not denied. But then we should also understand that even we have to actually quit this body someday. We will also be separated from our immediate family members or our near and dear ones. So, we should understand that this life in this body is actually a journey. And the journey is meant for reaching a destination. Anybody undertakes a journey, then that is meant for reaching a destination. What is the destination? Destination is Krishna's personal abode. So, simply if we uh, aim for uh, 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 ultimately reaching Krishna's uh, personal abode by practicing spiritual life and that is the uh, best way to actually uh, prepare for a very bright future. One more question. <clears throat> um, in Parampara system, Krishna first gives knowledge to Brahma as mentioned in the introduction of the Bhagavad Gita. But in fourth chapter, it is said that Krishna first spoke this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita to Vivaswan. So how can we understand this? Actually, the scriptures say Krishna is the source of all knowledge and Krishna instructs first either uh, the sun god Vivaswan in this uh, sun dynasty hmm, or Brahma, the first created being. Krishna has instructed different uh, persons at different times to begin a, a, a parampara. So it's not that Krishna only instructs one person, no. Like Krishna is instructing Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. So uh, Krishna does instruct first and then from the person who has got instruction from Krishna that knowledge is passed down in parampara system. Next question, even though we know it's change of dress, still the person inside the body is pained as is the fear of losing somebody who we know very well. So how to get over this? Yes, when there is a distress or when something happens to the body or we lose a, a, a near or dear uh, relative, it is there is pain. But as Krishna says, learn to tolerate this by superior knowledge, by superior knowledge and by spiritual practice. Two things are required. One is the superior understanding, that very fundamental understanding, the person is not the body, the person is the soul. And at the time of death, the person has quit this body and entered another body. And second uh, aspect of this tolerance is practicing spiritual life, whereby we actually uh, spiritualize our consciousness because of which we are able to tolerate the, uh, the, the distresses or the pains or the, or the loss of near and dear ones we are able to tolerate. Last question. Uh, life before 5000 years existed. Did it exist? Life was there going on? Yes, it was. If yes, who was the ruler? This question is best answered in our scriptures. Ordinary history books may give you some history about something which is maybe about 2000 years old. But the Puranas contain history which is very, very ancient. 
even the Puranas go back to the beginning of creation itself. And beginning of creation means this creation, present creation, the creation also is happening cyclically. But this creation, our Brahma, the first created being in our universe, present universe, is uh, completed half his lifetime. His one day itself we cannot uh, uh, imagine how long it is. It is something like uh, uh, four billion years according to our calculation is 12 hours of Brahma, half a day of Brahma, four billion years according to our calculation. So it is fantastically long as far as uh, we are concerned. But in any case, the Puranas give us uh, the uh, the genealogy of the kings or the rulers at different times. Of course, not every single ruler is mentioned, but the chief persons, the important persons are mentioned. Uh, so, there was a ruler 5000 years back. It was the king who was ruling the entire world from the uh, seat at Hastinapura. So, 5,000 years back, the Kuru dynasty was ruling the entire world. The forefathers of the Pandavas, before the Pandavas took charge, Dhritarashtra was the caretaker king. Before Dhritarashtra, Pandu was the king. Before Pandu, his father, Vichitravirya was the king. And before Vichitravirya, uh, Shantanu was the king. So the dynasties, are the, the, the succession of rulers is mentioned in the Mahabharata, in the Puranas, it is mentioned. So about 5000 years back is when roughly the battle of uh, Kurukshetra took place, the end of the previous Yuga and this present Kali Yuga began. So around that time the uh, Bhagavatam itself is listing the, uh, uh, the rulers who were ruling. So we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you.